Hello, my name is Jeff. I'm with the Grody Company, and today we're going to go over disassembling this sauce pump. All right, we're going to start by removing the sauce insert. By removing the sauce insert, I'm going to pick these two on the side to remove first. I'm going to remove it so that it's up and I'm going to turn it so that when I push it up, it extends fully up. That's letting me know that it is going to catch the insert when I go to release it. Now I'm going to unturn this one and I'm going to loosen these two together. By doing that, this insert should fall, should drop down on its own. Then I'm going to reach under, I'm going to lift with this hand. I'm going to turn this one out of the way, grab it with both hands and remove it. After I remove that, I'm going to unscrew the sauce pump. I'm going to grab the handle and out, pull them together. And I'm going to unscrew this out. You need to remember to come under here and catch the lower discharge valve. Once that's removed, this is separated from the sauce head. Now that we have the sauce pump off the sauce applicator, we're going to disassemble it. Sometimes when you come up and you can't loosen one of the wing nuts, it could be that that was tightened before the other set. So what you may want to do is find out which ones are the loose ones, loosen those first, and then come back to the one that's tight. And it'll usually come out free. So we're going to remove the wing nuts. We're going to remove the anti-vibration washers. Make sure that you keep the sets together. Uh, even though there's three, there's really six pieces in all. To remove the air cylinder portion of the pump free from the base, I'm going to put my two fingers underneath the lip, put my thumbs on the two studs, and I'm going to push down. That will break the seal uh, that's created when we bolt it together. And I'm going to pull it apart. So I'm going to keep the pump in the upright position so that when I remove the pin, I don't drop it and it hits the floor. Uh, you got to make sure we don't break these tips off. Uh, once I have that loose, then this piston will remove from the pump. To loosen the cylinder from the pump base, right now it's stuck on there. You can see that I can lift this up. And what you're going to do is you're going to grab two fingers on these two rods, and I'm going to push the cylinder towards this pin. Once I have it there, it'll lift this side, then I'm going to pull it back, and it'll come free. To remove this O-ring, you don't want to use a tool. You're going to have sauce all on this, so you're going to have to wipe some of the sauce off. You're going to hold one side tight with your finger or thumb, and then I'm going to take the other side, and I'm going to slide this side around until I get a gap. Then I can grab that O-ring. Then I'm going to pick it up and take it off. The same thing with removing the O-rings from the piston. You're going to have to clean it off. It's going to be full of sauce. One of the things you need to note is it will be in the pump in this fashion with the hole up. This should be full of sauce. This should have a little sauce. This should have none. So these O-rings are going to tell you when they need to be replaced on how much sauce you get between this O-ring and this one, and this one and that one. You should never have sauce up here. To remove it, I'm gonna place this finger and I'm gonna place my thumb not quite 90 degrees from it. I'm gonna take this finger and I'm gonna kind of pinch it, the O-ring, so it doesn't move. And I'm gonna use the flat of my finger on this one to slide the O-ring up so it creates this loop that I can grab with my other finger and push it off. The thing that I don't want you to use is a screwdriver or any kind of sharp object that can go in here and dig this out. By using something like that or a pocket knife or anything like that, you can cut the O-ring and then you're going to scratch the inside of the area where the O-ring seats against. 
When you scratch that enough, then the O-ring won't seat anymore, and then you're gonna have issues. So this is a toolless removal of all parts on this sauce pump. Again, if it's too slippery, you can use the rag, use the same thing, do it the same way. Again, to get that O-ring to come loose, I'm gonna pinch it here with this finger. I'm gonna take my thumb just slightly off of 90, and I'm gonna push it till it loops up. Then I'm gonna use my thumb or my finger to push it off. We're gonna remove these hairpin clips. We're gonna remove the flow diverter. Now to remove the ball and spring check ball assembly from the lower housing, you're gonna place your both thumbs inside here. You're gonna put your fingers on the outer lip. Um, it will be slippery, so you need to wipe it off or rinse it off. And I'm gonna put these fingers down here so when I push, this doesn't come right out and onto the floor. So again, I'm gonna push from here. I'm gonna catch with these two fing these fingers here. Once I have that removed, again, we're gonna remove the O-rings, pinch it, turn it, slide it over the side, and that's completely done. This O-ring comes off a little different since it's in a groove, down in a groove. You're gonna again wipe all the sauce and the grease off it the best you can. I'm gonna push it until the O-ring pokes up. Once it's poked up, then you can remove it. Again, you do not need a tool to remove this O-ring. Now we're gonna to come to the back side. You're gonna have res residual grease from when we put it together, plus some sauce. I'm gonna wipe the sauce off again. Do the same thing, pinch the O-ring, slide it off. Once we have this part, this unthreads, this is called the cap, this is called the housing. I gotta unscrew that. Once we unscrew this, this gets us inside to where the ball and the spring are located. When you get almost done, you wanna hold this up this way. So when you remove this, this ball doesn't fall out and bounce on the floor and you lose it. The spring is captured in its housing. To remove the spring, you're not gonna just pull it out. You're gonna take the spring, move it to its side in that fashion, just push it to the side. And then I'm gonna unscrew it in the direction this way. So look at the spring going off of the edge and that's the way I'm gonna turn it. And then when I turn it, it's gonna unscrew right out of This spring should be one inch from the top of this to the table, or no less than one eighth of an inch from the top to the table. Any dimension different than that, then this needs to be replaced. The ball, you're gonna check that also. That should stick out just a little bit. If it sticks out more than one quarter of an inch off of this face, this tip, then this needs to be replaced. Again, to remove this O-ring in here, sometimes it's easier to reach through the hole and poke it out uh, or just go in and grab it. So I removed all the O-rings without a tool and that's the way you need to do it.